piece at the adapter which is a normal thing i read i don't know probably five to ten cummins form posts about that happening to other people it's a normal thing but here's the thing i adjusted the o-ring i moved it back because i figured this is this adapter was actually bigger than the one i should have got but now i'm completely convinced that this is the one that i should have and because i have the bracket and the hose and everything on there i was actually able to get a good grip i put the o-ring in the stock position of which it came in the kit and now i finally was actually able to get it into here so that's good it's not leaking over there. It was just leaking here. The O-ring is in the stock position. It is extremely tight. It was it was pretty loose before, I'm not going to lie. It's extremely tight now. I tightened up the bracket again. I think we should be good to go. So this is just trial and error at this point. I wasn't even completely convinced that I had the right kit. So I do have the right kit. So it should be good to go now, but I'm not really sure. So I guess we'll give it another go. Don't mind all the foggy smoke. That's just the coolant burning off of the turbo in other places so that should be that should be fine and then we'll finally take it on the drive if that doesn't start dripping the high idle kicked on it kind of scared me a little bit i was like oh what's going on and then i noticed the coolant was it went away for a second but then it came back so it's still cycling i also read a forum post that in the five dines they own have coolant cycling right here like this with the hose and i've seen kits also for a fourth gen ram cummins they don't even put a hose here they just block it off with plugs on each side and someone said that it's no problem at all, you don't even need that. It's only because it, you only needed this to go because of the EGR cooler there and needed to cool that off. And that was the that's the way it was doing it. It was using the same coolant that the engine was using. So I don't know, there's mixed opinions about it, but they make the kits now with the hose and everything. And I, I don't know, I think cycling it sounds better to me. And of course it's going back in the engine. I don't think blocking it off with plugs is the best way to go. I guess we're ready to test it. <laughs> I'm hoping it doesn't leak anymore. I kind of freaked out before, that's why I wasn't really filming. I was, I had to stop the engine and I, I really wanted to work on this. I had to get that all sorted out because it was just, it was just continuously dripping. I got a bucket under there now. <laughs> Woo! She's alive! She's alive! <laughs> yeah, I think it burned off all that coolant. I'm not seeing any more coolant coming off the engine or the turbo or anything. And I don't think it's leaking anymore. I think the O-ring is perfect. It's just my hand just got a little wet from what was there. But yeah, it, it was pouring out. It was dripping pretty bad. I'm not seeing anything, guys. I think we're good. right here right underneath it here it was leaking and there was also coolant just coming out everywhere it was terrible but i think we're good now i think we might be able to take it on the road i'm gonna give it a few more minutes and then we're gonna see if it, if it drips anymore or not if it's not dripping then we're gonna take it out i think we're good the exhaust is dumped right about here under the cab it's right there you can see that right so yeah Really, really blowing it out. Really want to get as much power and airflow as you can with the turbo. So what I thought fixed the problem, well, fixed it for the most part, but there was a small drip afterwards after letting it sit for a while and let it warm up. So what I'm going to do now is head to Advance Auto because I'm going to pick up a new O-ring. And you guys may be wondering why am I doing that? Well, I checked the o-ring that I had in there and I, I roughed it up a little bit whenever I was moving it around and I shouldn't have done that. And I read online that the o-rings they give you are really bad anyway. People experience leaking with them so I'm going to go get some o-rings from Advanced Auto and that should be able to fix the problem. I also read online that some people were also using a sealant to permanently seal it so there's no coolant coming out or anything like that. But then I'm also thinking I could do that, but then I'd permanently seal the adapter in there. And if I ever have to put the factory EGR cooler back onto my truck, the adapter for an EGR delete is going to be permanently on the truck and then I won't be able to put it on. So I don't think that's going to be a good option. If, I, if that is the last thing I'll, I can do, then I'll do that. And then I'll have to replace that whole metal pipe and everything. But I'm hoping that I don't have to do that. So I'm gonna run to Advance Auto here. I'm almost there and then I'm gonna grab some O-rings. I brought the one that was on the truck from the adapter with me so I can use that as a sizing reference. Can't mess up on this. Walk into my house on my driveway here. I think we got the rings dulled. 
Let's see if they work. Oh my gosh, I want to get this to work. All right, so what I did now was is that I took one of the I took one of the O-rings from the packaging, the one that was actually the closer size. This one's a little bit smaller. I did measure it, but just in case I did get one that was a little bit off on size. So that's the original one. This one sucks. I got one on there and it slid on there really good. And as you can see, I actually moved it back far enough. So it actually is very snug against here. You know what this color reminds me of? That Corvette wrap. And I must say, I do like this color a lot. It's very unique. But yeah, this actually fit all the way back and I tightened that bolt while holding this back. So I think we should be good. I wiped off a little bit of coolant, but as you can see, it's still basically everywhere. So I don't know if I lost any in the tank it's still at the max line maybe even a little bit more you can see it moving there so i guess we'll fire her up and and see how she does now i think it might be good if not i'm not sure what i'm gonna do i'm gonna have to order that glacier diesel one and by glacier diesel one glacier diesel makes this adapter there just like this one that looks like the turbo whistle but it's actually a different design and model and everything and they designed it a lot better where it clamps onto the outer portion right here and it's also good for the hose on this side as well. It'll connect to the hose better. So I will have to order that, but I don't, kind of don't want to have to go down that route because to order that, it's about 40, 40 to 50 bucks. I forget what it was, and then I'd have to wait for it and then install it and everything. Even though people have had the problems and everything, people usually don't post on forums unless they actually do have problems. So there was people posting saying they're not having any problems at all. So I'm hoping that this is good and I'm gonna fire her up and see if she's she's working and everything because that's actually a lot better fit than the other stock ring that was on it. Well, the adapter ring, the stock adapter ring. <laughs> You guys may be wondering how loud is this truck whenever the door is open a lot louder the cabs in these newer trucks really really drown out all the sound of the engine and because i'm literally dumped under the cab i have all the deletes installed now they're all about delete including i mean of course you could take the turbo out and then it'd be extremely loud but i'm not going to do that i like the power forced induction man all the way so we're in the cab now just sitting in my garage garage door is open i can taste the coolant you can probably see my breath so i'm gonna be pulling out the truck here and i think we're good now it was all about that o-ring and yeah i was digging my nails into that o-ring to move it you gotta understand i was completely tired it was probably midnight i'm adjusting this stuff i'm just trying to get it on at this point i'm not being too delicate and i should have been more delicate with that o-ring but i even read online that the o-ring's bad so if you guys get the kit just get a new o-ring anyway because the quality difference is insane when i was putting that o-ring on the new one that i got from ace hardware it was a lot it was a lot better quality i could tell right off the bat it was a lot stronger 65 cents repaired this truck believe it or not the coolant tank is still at max but here's the thing it probably hasn't cycled the whole way through so i'll probably go for a drive come back 
and then if it's if it's low i have a i have a, um, a three-fourths bottle of coolant and i think it's the xerox 05 you want to get that hot for these trucks at least for these trucks i know the i know the 59 cummins does something else it's a green coolant usually and this was a gold coolant so you want to make sure you always have one color you want to flush your system out completely if you're going to be changing colors or anything you always want to make sure you have the right coolant too all right so i guess let's head out here freezing cold my hands are freezing just because i opened this garage door my hands are now freezing it's crazy that work light i can feel so much heat it feels like the sun whenever i do feel the sun it does feel warm it can make 20 degrees all the difference all right enough enough rambling on let's get on out of here Yes, here we go. Finally driving the Ram after an extremely long time. And if the Ram didn't touch road saw, which it's it's kind of contradictory, I don't I don't know. It's kind of controversial if it did touch road saw or not. Because the last time I took it on the road, well at least whenever there was road saw on the road, it wasn't that much. But now it's really dirty out there. So this sucks. Fix the truck, which I think is I think it's fixed, which is a good thing. But then, of course, at the same time, it's hitting road salt, which, I mean, if the engine just rusts through the frame, is it really, is it really a truck anymore? Here we go, first drive with the new deletes, installed by yours truly. Man, she always stays on that gear longest, but it's not that bad. Ever since I did the transmission relearning, it's always been smooth. Even now, being it's so cold, I think this is the first time I've ever taken this truck out being so cold. I don't think it's ever experienced this cold the weather on the road before and at the same time it's being a diesel truck it doesn't like it but at the same time it's also salty road so it's getting the worst of everything right now the worst treatment ever and i do apologize cummins but there's not much i can do i mean i live in this area 717 man for life i'm at home now and i'm pulling the throttle valve off because i'm leaking boost and i think it's because of this here is here's the knife i was using to scrape at the edge of that i don't know if you can see the bottom of that but it's pretty shiny and it's looking new now that's because i was scraping at it for a long time as you can see all the shavings are there i was smart putting a towel there so it doesn't always just go into the hose and here is big pieces that were on there so that's definitely why i had a loss of boost loss of power and hopefully the gasket will go on just right now that was the whole reason why i was hearing noises whenever i was going down i was freaking out so i think we should be good now i'm going to tighten it back up we'll start her up and see how she rolls all right guys i think we got her good now all right guys so i think i solved the problem there's no air that's going to escape from there, so I'm going to start her up, go for a test drive, and I think we should be good now. My camera is going to die, so I'm going to go as long as possible, but there might be an abrupt stop, and that is why. And just like that, no more loss of boost. I'll show you what I did. Okay. Oops. All right, so I tightened the clamp down in there. I don't know if you could see that. It's way down in there. But I also switched this clamp around. I took the hose off. I switched the clamp around. And I tightened up that clamp. If it would focus. Alright, so yeah, I tightened the clamp up down there. Tightened all these screws as much as I could on the throttle valve delete. Sorry, it's pretty pretty cold outside. 10 degrees actually. Also changed the O-rings around on this and then I tightened up all the bolts and I stripped through about I stripped through about three of those because I've kept all the ones from from cheap cheap products that give you the you know the little things to put things together they're all from those cheap things so they're easily stripped but the bolts are good so that's always good and I yeah I changed the o-rings upside down I I know that the this kit is notorious for cheap o-rings if you know what I mean so I might need to get new o-rings for this I'm not really sure I think it should be good I'm not hearing any loss of boost or air tighten the bolts down here because I originally wasn't going to take that off to clean this whole thing but I figured it would be too much and there's no leaks in the coolant so that's all good so we got all our boost back the Cummins is ready to be back on the road and it's been a couple days and now we're back on road yeah it was a, it, 
It was a long process, but we got it all. Remember, the O-rings that you give you are complete trash in this kit, so I'm probably going to just switch those out. I want to keep this thing running forever, so have a good day, and make sure to subscribe.